Okay, then this was a good idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I, I had several years ago, I had this epiphany. And I have epiphanies in the bathroom. And I bet most of you do too, because that's about the only place that you really have peace and quiet and you can get away from everybody. You know, now, if you've got kids, they probably aggravate you, but you can lock the door. You know, you can lock them out. <laughs> so, but my epiphany was that, you know, people cleanse their house, but they, they make two mistakes. First, they seal the shit in, okay? Because they, they don't realize that that's what they're doing. And, and the other thing is, once you cleanse the house, you wipe it clean like, like a slate, if you don't fill it with something right away, shit creeps back in, okay? So, the first thing is, how many of you use sage to, to, to cleanse your house? Who likes the way it smells? Yeah. Okay. I think it stinks. <laughs> I, I do. I think it smells like somebody left their turkey in the oven four hours to too long. And so I, I developed a product called Spontaneous Combustion. It smells wonderful. Okay. You don't have to light it on fire. You, you shake it and you spray it and it kills negative shit on contact. You know, I really think it's, it's the best cut and clear uh, on the market. And there are testers downstairs, and, and you, can, you, you can smell it if you want to. I pass this around, but I have a feeling that this, if I pass this around with the lid off of it, somebody's going to spill it, okay? Um, when you cleanse a house, even if you're smudging it, you need to crack the windows and, and crack your doors open because what happens is you're clearing out shit, but if that shit's not got, got any place to go, now you've sealed it in. So you have to give it an escape route. And I realize in nasty weather like this, you know, when it's really cold like this, nobody wants to be cracking their, their, their windows and their doors. But if you don't, you're just defeating the purpose. Okay? How many of you pray? Okay? Most everybody really does. They, they pray to one God or another or their higher power or something. If you want to reinvent your life, the first thing you need to do is... You need to acquire a white candle. Plain white candle. And I'm sure that we've got some of those downstairs. Where to? Yeah. Okay. And, and you need to talk to your deity of choice. Light, light, light the candle. You don't have to dress it. You don't need oil on it. Just talk to your deity of choice about what's going on in your life. Pour out your heart. You know, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. And you know what? I really need some help. And I would really and truly like for things to change like this. One, two, three. So, but, you know, th just plot this out, think this out. And then promise your deity of choice something that you'll do in return. Now, don't promise anything that you can't deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because because that, that that is not cool. This doesn't have to be something expensive. This can just be a random act of kindness every day. This could be a candle that you'll light in their honor every day. Okay? Uh, you know, and a random act of kindness is not a big issue. It could even be a good morning to a stranger on the street and, and a smile. Because sometimes that smile makes that whole, that person's whole day. So make, make, make a promise, but you know if you're going to do something daily in return for, for helping to change your life, then you need to be able to deliver that. Because otherwise things are going to go to hell in the handbasket, I can promise you. So, so, so if you think about it and be careful about, about what you promise. Now, you know, your candle may not burn down all at once. It depends on how how long or how large a candle you've got. You know, if you've got a 40 hour candle, you're not gonna burn that thing down in, in one fell swoop. So if you've got a larger candle, if you've got one of the little four inch tapers or something, that's fine and you, you can be done. If not, you may want to divide that into three parts, that candle, and burn an increment every day, three consecutive days, and say your prayer three consecutive days. Then you're gonna start cleansing this house. How many of you have a bunch of clutter in the house? 
Okay. And I, I am sure that, that more of you that are willing to raise your hands probably do. Okay. You know, there's, there's clutter and then there's a mess. The problem with a bunch of clutter is that negative energy can hide in there and it can break in there. And so if you've got stuff you don't need or you don't want or you just have a mess, do, do your damnedest to, to get rid of that but before you start cleansing because you don't want to defeat to, to your purpose. But once, once you, you get things kind of square around, then it's time to start a serious cleaning ritual. And one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to get one of these tornado alley candles. Okay. It's a tornado alley candle. Tornado alley candle. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I know, I have an accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said it so quickly till it was like poop. But well, you know, most Texans draw. Yes, I know. But you know, just honey. Sleep. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. I, you know, when I was a kid, I was afraid. That, that I'd never get to say what I wanted to say until so I was like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. um, Tornado Alley is an uncrossing formula. Okay? So, and that makes it a very good cleansing tool. So any kind of negative crap that you've bred with your mess or that somebody has sent you is going to get, get swept away. Okay? So it is, it's a clean sweep. It gives you a clean slate. Before you light this thing, you're going to dress this with spontaneous combustion, which is the cut and clear oil. And this is one of those candles that you will not be able to burn down at one time. Okay? So, so my suggestion is, after you remove the, the label and the packaging, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, <laughs> you know, Score that into three sections, burn that on three consecutive days, okay? You don't have to oil it again or anything, just, just burn it, you know, that way. Burn this safely. Do not leave the house with this going. I had, I had a customer who ordered candles from me, and I got uh, an email from her, and she wants to know why her candles are sparking and sputtering. <laughs> and I said, well, well, what do you mean? She sends me a picture, and she has not removed the packaging. She has not removed the label, and, and of course, there's smoke everywhere. And, and I told her, I said, my God, child, blow that sucker out. You're going to burn your house down like this. You know, I mean, really, it was just awful. So now I tell people to be sure and remove the packaging. When I get to these other candles, I won't say that because you've already heard it, so that's, that's good. So, and, you know, if you are able to burn that candle in a central location in your house, do it. Then, you're going to take the spontaneous combustion spray, and you start from the back of your house. Do, does anybody have a lot like a two-story house? Anybody? Okay. Start on the top floor. From, from the, the, the back part of the house, you shake this up real good, and you're going to get, just give it one spritz in each room. Work, work towards your, your staircase, come down the staircase, go, go down to the back part of the first floor, spritz in each room, all the way to the front door. When you get to the front door, you're going to spritz your front door across the threshold and then the part of the door that faces outside. If you have other doors in your house, you're going to also, didn't, other doors that go outside, you're also going to do those, those doors. Make sure that you've got those windows and that, and that door cracked, okay? Now, you would probably think that that would be the end of it, but it's not, okay? Now, how many of you take showers? And, uh, okay, how many take showers? Okay. okay, does anybody in here take baths? Okay, good enough. This, this will work for either of you. Now what you need to do is you need, get, need to get rid of the crap that's on you. Because that's another mistake people make. You know, they, they close their house, but, you know, n negative stuff will attach onto you. And, you know, and when you go out the door, it doesn't fly off. It just goes with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are also bath salts. Now, a lot of people who take showers go, I can't use bath salts. I take showers. Oh, no. Yes, you can. 
you put a tablespoon or two of this on your shower floor. You step into the shower and you stand on it. Turn on, on your water. And, and what you do is you allow this energy to come up through your feet, all the way up through your body, and out the top of your head. It will get rid of, of that negative stuff. You use this every day until it's gone. Okay, yes. You put it on the floor. Yes, you, you put it on your shower floor. Okay. And you stand on it. You turn on the water. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then that energy comes up this way and it goes right off the top of your head. Okay. Okay? Your, you use your spray every day until it's gone. In every room? In every room. But it's just, it's just a spritz. Okay, so it's not like you're, you're squirting, squirting, squirting. So, yes, yeah, so this is going to last you a week even if you've got a two-story house, okay? So you're going to do that and, until it's gone. Oh. <coughs> How long you is can, that? Huh? For a long time. Well, you're going to do it for at least a week. But now this also, you can use as a body spray. Okay, so you can spray yourself with it if, if you want. The, or you can, you can wear the oil. And, you know, and this stuff really does smell good. You know what? I'm going to let y'all smell this just, just, just <laughs> because. Because it really does. It smells great. Mm. So, so, so y'all can pass that along. Don't spill it. Okay? <laughs> because because I, would, I, would, I wouldn't have y'all wear anything nasty. And, and gentlemen, it doesn't smell flowery. So, you know, you're not going to smell like you got into your girlfriend's perfume. <laughs> but, you know, it smells clean and fresh. And, and doesn't smell like nasty burnt sage. <laughs> so do this, do this ritual for a week. Don't do any other magic while you're doing it. Okay? Because it's it's, that's going to give you a clean slate. <clears throat> so this is, this is either a two-week process, or you can make it into a three-week process if you want to, if you really want to you know, jam things up. No special time, right? No. No, no special time. You don't have to wait for the moon to cooperate. You can start this at any time. Now, I, I do have, <clears throat> I have a preference for, for this. I like to start these kinds of things on a Sunday. And the reason I like to is because it's the day of the sun and it's the day of success. So all magic works, works well on, on Sunday. But that's my own preference. It's also the first day of the week. So, you know, but you can start this anytime you want to. Not everybody feels that, that way about it. You know, be, be comfortable with this ritual that, that you're creating. See, I talk fast, but I make good stuff, don't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The other thing is, once you start this ritual, you know how, how I asked you to, to pray to your deity and, and make a promise? Mm -hmm. When you go to bed every night, first thing you need to do is pray to that deity and thank that deity for that day. Okay? You need, you need to learn to be grateful for what you've got. And folks, I know there are going to be days when that's going to be hard, okay? Because I've had, you know, the mother of all days before. And it's like, okay, so... I appreciate the fact that I opened my eyes this morning mm -hmm. and I breathed air. But, you know, there's got to be something else, and sometimes you've got to dig deep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can always be thankful that you have a roof over your head. You can always be, be thankful that you've had a meal that, that day. You know, there are lots of things to, to be thankful for. You know, I'm grateful. I have a remarkable husband, and I'm grateful for him every day. And the other thing is... I know that some of you probably are here because you have money problems and you want to get that flowing again. I'm going to caution you. Never say, if you have, if you've got two cents in your pocket to rub together, don't ever say, I don't have any money. Because you'll discover that two cents will be gone. Okay? And, and so, you know, the, there, there are things that you need to be grateful for. And, you know, the gods will help you if you are grateful. But if you keep asking, 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 and you never say thank you, you know, hell, I wouldn't help anybody that did that, that to me. And then and, and they're not going to either. So, so, so remember to do that religiously every single night. And then, don't just ask your deity to bless you. 
Ask your deity to bless those around you, your friends and family, your, ex your extended family and loved ones. Because I've discovered that when I ask for other people to be blessed, I get lots of blessings. So, so to be sure to, to do that too. Okay, after that week, if you had been feeling depressed and oppressed and, and all kinds of other nasty stuff, you ought to be feeling better and lighter. Because it, it really does change your energy. It changes the energy in the house. But now you are going to have to fill that space with something because what you've done is you have literally cleaned the slate. There's nothing there. Now, this, now the good news with this is that you do not have to open doors and windows again. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> um, what I would do to protect stuff is, you know, this, th th this is one of those, it's a good idea, <clears throat> and, and some of you may already have some other form of protection. For those of you who have a permanent residence, <clears throat> you probably need to do a traditional witch's bottle, okay, to protect yourself and your property. And I have one. I'll put it together. Okay. Uh, it's called Swamp Witch, and all you have to do is add your urine. And then, then you bury this close to this close to your front door as you can on the property. Me. Yes. <laughs> you did say bury your urine. Your urine. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's yep. Yeah. Wait, okay. Urine. Urine. Okay. <laughs> the only thing you have to add is your urine. Everything else is in here. Okay. And the reason with a witch's bottle, a protection bottle like this, that you add your urine is because well to start with, that's part of you, okay? So that identifies this property as yours. It's like a dog marking its territory, okay? It identifies that the property is yours. You bury this as close to your front door as possible, and it protects the people who live within the house and the property. It works great. However, if you rent a place, you know, once you, you bury a witch's bottle, you can't very well dig it up and take it with you. <laughs> so there's something called I spy. And this is really easy because you don't have to pee in this bottle. <laughs> you, all you do, there's, there's a scroll in, in each one of these bottles that has your complete directions. But you can use the back of that paper and you write the address where, where you live. And you, you empty the, the little packet and follow the rest of the directions in here. But when you, you put in a central location in your home, and this has black eyed peas in it, amongst other things. Black eyed peas are fabulous with magic because they have eyes. Mm -hmm. And so, what you've got is a jillion eyes look, looking out for your shit. Okay, so, so, so this is a good thing. Um, when you move, it's not a big deal. You scratch through the address on the back of the paper, you write the, the new one. You put the cork back on, and you put this in a central location in your new place. So this is why it's so, so great for, for people on the move. You know, my husband's company moves us around a lot. And, uh, and I started using one of these about 15 years ago. And you know what? We have never had a problem. And we've lived in some interesting areas. We've never even had anything lost on a move. And we've made lots of cross-country ones. And, and there's something to be said for that, be, because, you know, it, in fact, sometimes I find things. I, the other day I found something that I hadn't seen in 10 years. There was, there was a, well, you know, I wasn't really looking for it, but it was like, oh, I don't think I ever opened this box. I think this box has just been moving around with us, you know, <laughs> for forever. And there was a whole bunch of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, usually, you know, you lose stuff, no. I don't. So, so this is a real good thing. Yes. So what if you move from your like the house that you actually, not an apartment or anything, but that you bury? Okay. Well, this you don't have to bury. Right. But uh, okay. But, but but like if you like if you if you buried one and you sold your house or something right. in it, well then you probably need another one for for, for your new place. Okay, and just leave that one there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you don't dig it up. Okay. That's. That's the new tenant's problem. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the only, the only interesting thing is about that is sometimes, I, I've heard of this twice, where people did a witch's bottle and then they wanted to sell their house. And then they had a little difficulty because the house belonged to them. Mm. And so, 
That can also be fixed. Uh, St. Saint, Saint Joseph is really good for that. I suggest people get a little St. Joseph statue and you bury him upside down in your front yard. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is, when you show the house, you make sure it smells like apples and cinnamon. Mm. Because, because that makes, that makes that scent seems to make people feel loved and feel at home. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, g generally that, thank you. Also, if you're gonna sell a house, don't make it look like house beautiful on the inside. It was an interesting thing. We, we lived in the house, we rented a house that was for sale. And so every time I'd hear from the owners that um, the realtor was gonna come and show the house, they'd make an appointment so you know we can have, I would scrub and I would clean and I'd have everything beautiful. And you know what? People would come in, they go, oh, this is gorgeous, blah, 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 blah. they never buy it. Mm. I was on the professional archery circuit for a while. And so I came in, they were supposed to give me, I think, a 36 hour notice. I came in, I did two tournaments in one day. I came in, there was a message on the answer machine that these people wanted to come and show the house at 10 o'clock the next morning. It's 11 o'clock at night. And so I thought, I'm so tired, I just can't. I just can't. And so I got up, I had a few hours of sleep. I got up early in the morning, I vacuumed. But you know what? <laughs> we lived in that house and things just were what they were. Believe it or not, the house sold. Because it looked like people lived there. You know, it didn't look sterile. So, so you know, if you really want to, to, to sell a house, don't make it look like a magazine page. You know, it's okay for a few things to be out of place. You know, not every magazine has to line up perfectly. It's <laughs> on your table, it's good. You have options about what you're gonna fill this nice blank space with, okay? That you're gonna, you can fill it with good luck, or you can fill it with money, or you can fill it with both. Okay, I personally start out with good luck because when people want to change their life, it's usually because their luck hadn't been all that good. Okay, so so I would I would do the uh, the next step of the ritual with hot damn which is triple X good luck formula. Mm -hmm. You know what, it's good for gambling too, I tried it. <laughs> yes, yes, it is, it is. Um, and you do the same thing, you follow the same steps with, with the hot dam that you did with the spontaneous combustion. With the, the oil and the candle, and it's a 40 hour candle, so yes, you're good, it's gonna take you three days to, to burn this candle down. You're gonna use the, the spray and you're gonna you're gonna spray the rooms just like you did before. Spray the threshold, spray the inside and outside of the, the entrance and exit doors. And you're gonna use bath salts. Because now you want, you don't just want your area to be filled with good luck. You want yourself to be filled with it too. You know, you, you want to be so lucky that somebody might accuse you of having a horseshoe up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, it, it's real funny because I have, um, before I gave this class, I had, I had people that were coming to me going, oh, you know, my life sucks, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, la, 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 la. And, and you know, what am I going to do? And so I actually used six people as guinea pigs across the country. And I put them on this little regimen. And it's like, okay, let, let's see how this works. And, you know, you know, are, are you willing to, you know, do you trust me? And it was like, well, yeah. Will you do exactly what I tell you to do? Yes. All right. And, and it was amazing the results they had. With, you know, now, even some people who had depression problems went, wow, my meds have started to work again. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because, well, you know, so, sometimes, you, you need, you know, if, you, if you're on depression meds, you need those tweaked. But sometimes you feel like nothing's working and you get more and more depressed and it was like, wow, you know, this stuff is really great. And so they have done real well on this. And so this is why I'm sharing this with you because it's like, oh, because this really does work. And I, you know, I don't want to recommend anything that, that doesn't. The, the hot dam is great. You do the same thing with that. You do it for a week. 
the biggest problem that I have with people is once they start doing the spontaneous combustion, then they want to work all kinds of other magic. No, you have to make sure this stuff is cleared out first. And then you don't want to work anything else until you get your life turned around right. So I think, I think the, the haunt dam is, 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 is exactly the way to go with that. Now, some people would rather have money than good luck. See, I think you should have both. So, so the third week, what, what I recommend is the, the rich bitch. And you do that the same, the, the very same way. Huh? No, I have the candle, but I'll get the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the bath soap? Can you use the oil in a bath? Honey, you, you, you can. You can if you want to, okay? But, but the reason we use salt is because salt, negative energy can't cross salt. That's, that's why. Negative energy can cross oil, but it can't cross salt. And, you know, and that, that's another thing. A lot of people that, that cleanse their, their homes and stuff want to use salt. Well, again, if they don't open the, the windows and the, front door, and the doors and give that crap an exit route, but they've done a seal that in with salt because the negative energy can't cross it, so now it just stays there. Okay? But, but yeah, you know, I, I, I prefer that you use the bath salts. It will not hurt you to put oil in the tub. No, it won't. Okay. I have a question. I have an answer. Okay. <laughs> so you say you're supposed to do the shower bathing after you cleanse the house, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you, you said the energy kind of comes from the bottom, mm -hmm. the top, where does it go? Like if you just cleanse your house, is it like going back into your house, like the negative energy from like if you take a shower? Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you know when, when, but when you cleanse your house, right. you have your windows cracked and your doors open. So the negative energy as you cleanse goes out of your house. Boom. Okay. Now, when when you're using the the bath salts mm -hmm. and you're like standing on them in the shower, the salt comes up through this way, and the negative stuff goes. Okay. Energy is just energy. Mm -hmm. And so you're wondering where that goes if that's going back in your house, yeah. right? Yeah. No, it's not because the spontaneous combustion that you squirted kills negative energy on contact. You've already spritzed okay. your bathroom, okay? So it's like, it's like right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Sam, <laughs> yeah. gone, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, just one yeah. more so, so, yes. So if, what if you have like three or four people living in the house? With you. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> 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 so they go through the same ritual. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, are these are these family members? My yeah. husband and daughter. Okay, honey, if you can get them to go through that and, and do this, that that's fine. Okay. Yeah, my mom and daughter. Okay. Um, you know, you 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 might be surprised. You might be able to get your husband to to, to stand on that song. Okay. Yeah, you will. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you, you know what else? Do his feet ever hurt? <laughs> you could get him to suck his feet. But he don't. He'll do it. Okay. I just have yeah. to tell him that it's yeah form. Yeah. That, yeah. You're yeah, really and truly. Yeah. I, yeah. I would do that. Their family members. You know. Sometimes if you got roommates and stuff, it's kind of hard to mm -hmm. to, to deal with right. you know okay. with them. Okay. okay. But but no. And you know, and you and you don't need a lot, okay? A tablespoon or two, you know, is, is fine. You know, some some people go, this is this is a nine ounce jar. And there are also the the refill bags down the stairs. Um, I did, we didn't send a lot of jars, but then in a little organza bag, it's the same amount of salt that's that's in here that's that it's in a refill. Um, yeah, it's only you know, you only need a tablespoon or two. So, you know, some people go, well, you know, that's not a lot. And then I find out that they have just gone, cool, you know, <laughs> into the bathtub. It's like, no, 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 no. This is, this is pretty stout stuff. Um, how many of you are gamblers? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. If you're a gambler, I, before you go gamble, I would, I would give my, myself a spray of rich fish and rub hot damn oil through my hands. Yeah. You can, with, with these oils, except for not, not spontaneous combustion, but either the, the hot dam or the rich bitch, there are all kinds of things that you can do with this stuff. Okay? I, the, the sprays are great because they can be used as room spray or a body spray. The oils are great because you can 
put a dab on the soles of your shoes to, to bring you good luck wherever you walk. I, I put the rich bitch on my, on my husband's shoes on the soles. <laughs> and, he, and he and the dog go for walks and find money. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right before I left, he found a $20 bill in the snow. Oh. So, you, you know, yeah. So, so you know, you, you can do that. Uh, you want money to cross your palms? You, you, you put the, the oil between your palms and, and you rub. You can anoint your money, your folding money. You know, put, put, put a dab on your index finger, hit the four corners of the bill, draw an X uh, on each one. It's, it, it is amazing. Your, your money will multiply. Put a dab on the inside of your mailbox. Dab the outside of your front door. You can even, with oils, you can even put a, a dab like on a cotton ball or a Q-tip <coughs> and dab the light bulbs in your house. And as you flip on the lights and that heats, that magic goes all through your house. So, you know, there are a lot of ways that, that you can use these, these products and, and, and be effective. Who else has got questions? Oh, I do. I'm okay. just thought about it. Well, I'm not a gambler, but you said if I want to be, well, you did say that I can dab it on my palms, mm -hmm. and that's going to bring money to me? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm not a gambler, but... If I put this on my hand, I might try my hand again. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I'm a gambler. When you get to be my age, it's a gamble with you open your eyes in the morning. Okay? So, so I think everybody's a winner. If you try in the winter, you gamble. Huh? If you drive in the winter, you gamble. Well, well, that's true. You see, I really try to stay at home or have somebody else drive me. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, you know, the, the thing about money is this, too. <clears throat> There, there are lots of ways to keep money coming to you. All right, let's talk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it has to do with the way you're... Well, to start with, ladies, how many of you have your purses on the floor? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Pick them up. <laughs> my granny's old wife's tale. Well, it's not an old wife's tale, okay? The floor, the floor is as low as you can go. Your whole life is in, is in that, that bag, okay? So that, that is not what you want. You never want it on the floor. You know, in Asia, money is, is extremely valuable, and it's revered. And if you, if you drop uh, folding money on the ground and the wind blows it, and you step on it to keep it from blowing away, that's a jailable offense. You don't want to spend on money. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's revered. And a lot of people have, I think the reason people don't, don't have such good luck with money is because they have a weird relationship with it. They, they don't see it for what it is. You know, folks, energy is just energy. Everything's made of energy. You know, your bag's made of energy, the light's made of energy. Uh, you know, the plant's made of energy. I'm made of energy. Energy's the only thing that ever goes away. It only changes shape and form. That's it. And as practitioners, all we do is transform, reshape, and direct energy. Mm. All money is, is energy that we use for things we want and need. That's it. And once you see it like that, it's even though you know that nobody's going to let you have anything without it, okay? Mm -hmm. But once you see it as nothing more than energy, it kind of changes your view of it. And, and your relationship with it. When you put money in your wallet, make sure that all of the faces on the bills are facing you and make sure they're all turned right side up. I actually like them to be in their separate denominations. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. When you um, give somebody money at the store, pay for it with a bill that is large enough so that you get folded money back. And when you get that folded money back, take those bills they give you and fold them toward yourself. That brings money to you. And then you can straighten it out later or you can make those people wait in line. You know, while, while you get yourself straightened out. But that, that in itself makes a world of difference. Just, just these teeny tiny things. There are, uh, in, in Asia, it used to be that 
the uh, sign for prosperity was a giant penis. <laughs> and you would see that everywhere from the time store to the whorehouse. Mm. And, and so the Westerners came over and said, man, that's nasty, you can't do that. <gasps> you know, you've got to fix this. And so they came up with this little lucky cat. And she has a paw up in there. Oh, and, and most of y'all have, have, have seen these little statues. Yes. You know, and, and some of them, you know, in stories you'll see and the hand goes back and forth and stuff. But, you know, just the, the little lucky cat statue. And the reason they use that for prosperity and, and fertility is because the gestation period for cats is unbelievably short. They multiply, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so this is fertile prosperity. Everyone should have one of those in their home, at least one. Now, but the placement is really important. She needs to face outside the window. Okay? So she needs to be facing your window outside. So her back to you. Because her job is to catch money as it goes by. So if you needs to be in a window. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know, the, the size doesn't matter with this, really. I have uh, a bunch of little ones that are about an inch tall. And I've got them facing out every window in, my, in our house. Okay. <laughs> and so she doesn't even have to be able to see out. You know, because, because some of my, my window frames are a little wider than she is tall. Doesn't matter. Okay? But yeah, she sits in the windowsill and, you know, and, and faces out. Um, there is a life in Buddha called Hotai. A life, I'm sorry. Hotai. It's H-O-T-E-I. And he, uh, he is the only god that is specifically designated to handle money. And he, you usually find him, he's laughing, and sometimes you'll see, you'll see him in different shapes and forms. Sometimes he's standing on piles of money. Sometimes he's got his hands up in there. But he's happy. <laughs> and uh, he, you'll see him, like any of you ladies that, that go to an Asian nail shop, Usually you see him facing the front door as you walk in. Mm -hmm. If you go to an Oriental restaurant, usually you see him facing the front door, okay? Hotai always faces the front door because he brings money in. Now, my husband has an interesting relationship with Hotai. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you have to understand my husband is not officially a practitioner. He's a backsliding Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we had, we've been married a couple years, and I had this Hotai statue, little red statue. And, you know, as I said, you know, his company moves us around a lot. And so, you know, most places it was easy for me to have Hotai face the front door, and it looked like it was supposed to be doing that. Well, we moved to Maine. Mm. And this is this little bitty house, and it's got a very strange um, room set up. And so the only way that I can get Hotai to face the front door is kind of put him whopper jaw on the table. Mm -hmm. so, so he'll face this, this front door. Mm -hmm. So, back then I was on the road six to seven months out of the year doing appearances. And my husband likes to clean. And of course I'm the mess maker and the mess maker's gone so now he can really clean. This is good. So I would come home and I would discover that Hotai was sitting square on the table. <coughs> And I would just walk in and I'd reach over and I'd put him a little warm jaw to his face his front door again. And this rocked on for several months. <laughs> and I have to tell you, my husband is really easy to screw with, okay? Because, because I, I do this with him all, all the time, you know? And then he'll finally go, oh, you're, oh, you're messing with me again, right? And it's like, yeah. <laughs> finally, he says to me, honey, I just have to know. He says, you know, a lot of weird things have gone on since we've been married. You know, I've had electric toothbrushes go hopping across the counter in the middle of the night. I've had plants wave at me when the air was not on. I said, you know, I've had all kinds of odd things go on, and I'm good with that. I'm good with it. But i got to know. Are you moving that damn statue of simply <laughs> around <the planet? laughs> so, so I took pity on him, and I said, okay, baby, I'm moving. I am. I'm moving. And... And he said, well, what is the deal? He says, you know, it looks really, really stupid. Why do you keep putting it? And so I explained to him why Hotai had to face front door. So anyway, he, uh, so I told him, I said, you know, if you, if you rub Hotai a little bit, you dust him off good, you, you rub him a little bit, you know, he'll help you find money. And so he did indeed. Well, you know, there came a, a point when 
um, he wasn't finding any money. And I said, maybe you need to take Hoti for a field trip. <laughs> and he said, a field trip? And I was like, I was like well, yeah, honey, you know, maybe you need some sunshine. <coughs> so, you know, if I were you, I'd clean him up real good, and I'd take him for a drive. <laughs> and bring him back home, let him sit in the sun for a while, and then put him back on his table, fill him face to winter. By God, he started finding money just like this. So, I, you know, uh, we, so we had, we've had this, this running thing, and now I've got, in, in the apartment we have now, the townhouse we've got now, I've got a lamp that's kind of a primitive lamp, and it comes up like this, and it's got a wood block like so, and it's got a carriage line. And so, the only good place to put hot tie is right up here on, on top of this, but the other day, our dog, I have a black lab named Dixie, and she was racing through the house with a ball, and, and she bumped that, and you should have seen Mark. He was grabbing for hot time. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, honey, it's all right. It's not going to hurt him. He's a statue. You know? <laughs> It'll be all right, you know. But, but yeah, so, so hot is real good for, for good luck and, and for money, too. Um, how many of you have those little feng shui frogs? Okay. Okay. Where? How? In respect to your front door, which way are they facing? Inwards. Inwards. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anyone who has those little feng shui frogs, sometimes they have a coin to mouth, sometimes they don't. Make sure that their ass is to your front door. Okay. Don't ever let them face your front door because they're supposed to bring money in. If they're facing your front door, they're taking money out. So, so be sure of that. That will change hey, things. Hey, Brianna and Shannon, how many times have we had to rearrange the frogs? Because mm -hmm. people come in and they don't like that they're looking at the back end of the frog. <laughs> the store, many. And they change the frog and we go like, whoosh. I did exactly. that last yeah. night, in fact. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, the other thing is, and this is real easy to do, doesn't cost you anything. Make sure that the lids of your toilet seats are down. Yes! Thank you. <laughs> I was doing that anyway, just because of my cats. <laughs> okay, well that, that's fine. But if you, if you leave those lids up, your money will run down the drain. And so will your health. So this is, you know, and it's, it's very easy to... to uh, Forget to do it. You know, if you're not used to doing that, it takes some practice. But, you know, I've gotten to the point, you know, I've always said i got to get in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. But I have learned to, to find my way in the dark, and I never forget to, to put the lid back down. You know, so now I'm really in the habit of that. But it made a big difference in our finances. And I'm also hardly ever sick. So, you know... You know, give, give that, that a shot because that will also make a difference. Now, there's one other product that I really want to talk to you all about. And it is called St. Dorothy the Wicked. This is the Magical Miracle Worker. And we work this formula up for those impossible situations. And, and I have, we've had real good luck with this. I've had people order this, and before they even get it, I'm getting an email from them going, Good Lord, I just placed the order, but you know what's happened already? This, this, and this. And, and, and that kind of blew me away, because it's like, But honey, you don't have this in your hand yet. You just ordered it. I know that's why I'm emailing you. Because this, you know, this really rocks. And it does. The one thing I want to say about magic, though, is, you know, people sometimes think, oh, I'm going to work this spell, and it's like, poof, everything's going to be fine. You have to apply yourself, folks. You know, magic opens doors for, for you. It's kind of like your, your buddy knows somebody that can get you that great interview, but you still have to go on the interview, okay? And you, and you still have to be at the top of your game to get, to get that job. So, so what it does is, I like to say it levels your odds. But if you really have a tough situation and you have exhausted all your mundane possibilities, this is, what is, is exactly what you need. Because I, I have seen it do some amazing, amazing things. I actually do have a lottery winner. 
But I do have a customer that won seventy five thousand wow. dollars. Wow. With with, with Saint Dorothy. Yeah. So I got that email Light this morning, huh? Light <laughs> Light well, you know, what we're going to know is, honey, where's your cut? <laughs> yeah, you know. But um, but anyway, yeah. So and and it's not just good. You know, we've talked a lot about money. It's not just good for money, but it's good for you know just about everything. So if you if you've got one of those impossible situations. That's that's where you need to go with it. I'm your tester for you. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Sprinkle a little on our fingers, you know. A little on the fingers. Are you supposed I'm to do the, the I mean, field testing? The beta testing has already happened. Oh, <laughs> well, you always need more than one. You know, it's time to just you know grab onto it. All right. Get your own. All right. I was just saying, is that like a thing you're supposed to do after doing that initial tornado alley? Like, are these supposed to be done after you do that initial cleansing first? Or can you just light that candle? And... Well, you know, <clears throat> it, it, yeah, you know, if you really want to change your life around, by God, I, I would do this tornado alley with a spontaneous combustion. You know, if, you're, if you want to turn your life around. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, is your life going now a lot, lot like you want it to go? I mean, if, if, it, if it is, I mean, if you don't need to reinvent your life, so you don't need to clear out negative stuff. Yeah, you, you can do this. But if you want to clean slate so, so you're sure that's really going to work and do exactly what you want it to do, then yeah, I'd, I'd get rid of the, the negative crap first. You know, it's kind of like um, using a blackboard. And, and you've used it for, for, for several days, and now you've got all that chalk dust on it. Mm -hmm. If you really want what, what you write on it to be able to be seen, you probably need to, to wet that, wipe that sucker down with something wet, right? So that, yeah, same, same basic principle of life. So, so if you really want, want a fresh start, then I would certainly use the spontaneous combustion of the tornado alley candle. You know, but again, it's, it's, it's up to you. I'm not going to stand over you to see to you. No, the, I, do, I just want to, I'm just curious. Okay, okay. Who else has a question? Oh, I did. Um, during the, if you're doing the whole, you know, three week ish process mm -hmm. of the cleansing, then, 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 um, not doing any magic in the interim, would that include, say, I've got some friends who are going through, through some medical stuff right now, so I try to at least once a day, you know, either send them a little distance Reiki or, you know, I have like my little candle set aside for them, or does that include the little stuff like that that you regularly do, or are you talking like just big kind of formal things? Starting you know. Time? What would you say? I would, until you got, until at least your front of alley candle was, was finished, mm -hmm. I'd be careful about sending energy. Okay, okay. just so be, like nothing gets in by yeah. accident. So, so, you know, for the first, say, say, say three days, mm -hmm. I get a head start on, on this because, yeah, that, that, that thing should already be working fine so that, that your energy it's good, and besides that, this will make your energy flow quicker. Bam. Right. Yeah. Do you do just the living spaces, or what if you have like storage attic or basement type oh, do spaces? It. Do thing. it. Do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Do the whole thing because that, that's another thing. You know, your your storage space where your is, stuff is. Well, it's where your stuff is, and all like that negative energy can hide there too, mm -hmm. and and multiply. And and you you know you don't want that. So, so don't clean it half ass, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, get, get the whole thing done at once and then you won't have to be doing it again. When people have to um, cleanse their, their area all the time, and I, I hear, hear that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I, you know, I went and I saged the house and I blah, 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 blah. And the next week, oh, I went in and I saged the house and, and it was like, how much negative shit do you have? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, if, and if, if you keep getting negative stuff in there, I think you need to make some changes. Because generally, it, you know, a home gets infused with your energy, and your energy shouldn't be all that, that negative. If it is, you need to stand on a bunch of that. So, <laughs> you know, but, but couldn't it be the people that visit you? It can be okay, but right. but generally okay. That's that that's one of the reasons that we do the hot dam or the rich bitch after the spontaneous combustion, mm -hmm. because once you have a clean slate like that, you don't want any more negative stuff coming in. Mm -hmm. So you need to fill that spot with something. Okay. So see, you're you're filling that that empty spot now with good luck, 
So that negative shit can't come in. Oh, okay. You know, it's kind of like a wound. You know, uh, a wound heals, but it fills up with tissue again. You know, you, if a wound doesn't heal, like in your mouth, then you have a dry socket. So you don't want a dry socket in your home. You want to, yeah. Yes? What if you have, like, long-running spells that are already going, like, I know you um, use the freezer spells, and when you put somebody in the freezer, what if you have spells like that running? Can you still do the Hurricane Alley candle without it affecting that? Or? Well, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, if, there's, if there's something like a freezer spell, you know, I, I've had somebody in the freezer for years. <laughs> and, you know, and she's moved across country with me uh, s several times in dry ice. <laughs> and, you know, we don't thaw her. So that doesn't affect anything. Okay. But, you know, so if it's something like that, where your spell is already completed, but, you know, the only way to undo it is like to thaw it. Right. Then, yeah, that, yeah that's okay. Because the spell is really complete. I'm just not going to undo it by letting her thaw. Okay? Yes? What if you cannot spray your whole house because, you know, you're still having to practice in secret because you live with people who do not necessarily understand or are very tolerant of your practice. Honey, sure. honey, it's a room spray. Okay, just making sure I can Yes, I mean, I mean, it, I, I mean, it is. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it's one, it's like an organic room spray. You know, you, you know, you, you shake it up. So, you know, and, and for that matter, if, if you need to, you can. Put another wrapper on it or something, but you know it really is, it's, it's just room spray. So I and, and that was one of the reasons that I love this too, is because people don't really know you're practicing. Because you know it's you know I bought this, it's perfume, <laughs> makes my house smell good, good enough. 